I'm going to tell you a story about Tom Kite and his win at the U.S. Open. I've known Tom my whole life. Almost. We played a ton of junior golf together. We played amateur golf together. We played college golf against each other. I played at the University of Houston. He played at the University of Texas the same four years. So we did a lot together. And I would see Tom when he was on the tour up from time to time and we'd do some work. But in 1992, I spent the whole year working. It started at the beginning of that year. He was really not happy with his game. Tom always worked on his game and made some changes. And in 1991, he didn't have a very good year. In 1992, he was not in the Masters for the first time in maybe 18 or 20 years. So he was pretty depressed about that. And he was using a very wide stance at uh, La Costa when I saw him. Uh, had a lot of movement. And he still had a lot of drag from underneath, and he felt trapped. He was hitting uh, a lot of weak iron shots. That's really where we started. And I had him narrow up, and I said, look, Tom, you know, you're moving off the ball a lot. And he said, well, I'm trying to do that so I can hit more forward when I hit it. But I said, look, you know, when you get this far behind uh, the golf ball with your short irons, man, it's going to be really tough to get the ball forward with a wide stance. I don't really like it. He said, great, well, look. Uh, he, and he hit it really good right away with his shorts, a lot better. He said, well, let's, let's really do some work. So we started at that point working pretty much the whole week at La Costa. And then I met him at a few different locations. I met him in Houston. We worked there for the whole, for the whole week. And then Doral came up in February. Um, at that time, we did a tremendous amount of work. It started on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And here's what I worked on with it. I said, I want you to feel more down with your left shoulder, more up with your right shoulder. We need to get this golf club more out, Tommy. We need to get it out here feeling because you're still dragging this club to the inside. Of course, that's what Kite did his whole life. He tended to get it underneath. He hit, he hit a hook since I, I started playing with him as a kid. But hitting that much from the inside and with that kind of movement, he was really off. So, specifically at Doral, after the work we, we did, I'm still watching him indoors. And I always had a, a, a line or a net like I have here. And we're going straight up this target line. And when Tom, Tom would hit, even though we were working on getting the club up here, and I'm going to show you how we did that. When we hit, he would still, we put it on TV, and the swing would still go out to the right, and the ball would hit right of that line. And, you know, went crazy, he hated it. So I was saying to him, look, instead of this lawnmower type of back swing you take with your right elbow going, and he'd done that for a long time, and getting too much depth right here, Let's try to get your right arm to work more up this way. That will get the club more up the plane. Of course, when I told him to feel up and out, that didn't happen. I don't think Tom ever took it above the plane line. But that's what he needed to feel. And that's what I think you need to know uh, as a student, too, is sometimes you have to have a huge exaggeration to get just a little bit of change. People say, well, I made a big change in my swing. Then when I put it on videotape, it's very difficult to see on video much of a change. So we exaggerated, and we did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Getting the club more up here, and getting the right arm to stay more in front of him. Keep the club more in front of him in, in this section of the swing. I call it position two, step two, or section two right here. And then up into section three, instead of getting this to happen in the swing. Which sort of dragged his head to the right. So now he's getting up here. And then I said, look, instead of letting this butt of the club push away from you here through impact, I need you to get this left arm, and particularly this left hand, to go into the left a lot more. So we had talked about this, even starting at La Costa. But now, when I was in my home turf, I had everything I needed. Didn't have track men at the time. But I did have a computer called Golf Tech, and it would measure inside out or outside in with your pad. 
It's called swing direction on track man, but we call it swing path. So it was so difficult for him to get to zero on it. He had to feel like he was just ripping his club to the left. So we did this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And with Tom, once it got dark, we would stay in this in my superstation bay and do another two hours. So I don't think anyone ever practiced harder than kite. And man, we're really working on this and getting that club to the left. Now, when that club got to the left, what I, what I was thinking is instead of going out here and having that rotation happen, the lag and, a, and a more of that kind of swing, this would really stabilize the club a lot more. He understood that. Look, here's the problem. On Thursday, he goes out and he starts 6-6-5 six, six, or 6-5-6, six, six, the first three holes of the ground. So it looks like he's going to shoot, you know, 90. And I, I hear about this report. I'm back at the range. And I'm sweating bullets. He comes in. Uh, after he finishes, he comes down with his caddy, Mike Carrick. And I'm pretty nervous to ask him what he shot, to be honest. So I'm just hoping it's not like an 80 or something. But it was a 73. So I was pretty happy to hear that. I didn't tell him. But I did say to him, hey, you know, I, got, I heard you got off to a bad start. Did you just forget what what we were working on and just played golf. And he looked at me like I was an idiot. And he said, no, he said, I'm trying to, I think we're doing the right thing. I just kept doing it. I uh, didn't do great today, but let's let's go back to work. And we did, so pretty much the same stuff. Keeping the right arm more this way, the club more in front of him, getting it more in this position at the top of the swing, but particularly right here, instead of hitting this right arm to do that, and then going to the left. So we got inside, and doing this, you know, he finally is able to get that ball to start straight instead of starting to the right, which he just hated. Okay, the next day he shoots 71, and that makes the cut right on the number, 144. He's, he feels pretty good, we work again, like a maniac on, on a Friday night. Saturday, 65. Gets back into a pretty good, you know, pretty good shape in the tournament. And then the last round, 69. It's par 72 at the round. Uh, he runs up to the back of the range uh, after the Sunday round. He finished sixth, but it wasn't that. He hit 14 straight fairways and 18 greens. And he told me I hadn't done that, as he said, in years. Okay, fast forward. A few weeks later, Atlanta, he wins. A few weeks later, the US Open, Pebble Beach, he wins that, he win by two. And I remember the last show, I was watching it on TV in New York, and you know, he takes out driver. And I'm thinking, geez, you only need a par, a par five at uh, Pebble Beach, OB to the right, in the ocean to the left. I was hoping maybe just hit a three iron and a five iron and just make a five or a six and win, win the tournament. But he took the driver up, blasted it right down the center, one by two. That next day, he flew back to New York and Ben Crenshaw, Tom Pratt, and myself had dinner at a little Mexican restaurant in Connecticut, a little celebratory dinner. It was one of the best dinners I've ever had. But the point here is to get a change, sometimes you really have to exaggerate. I don't think too many people could have broken 90 maybe in the US Open by trying to pick out something, which he did. He picked, that, picked out something outside his target line. He tried to take it over that, and then he tried to hit his left hip pocket on the way through. And those are the two main swing thoughts. We wrote a few other things down in his book, but those are the two things that he really thought about to win the U.S. Open. He also got to number one on the money list that year. And uh, it, you know, it was a great time for Tom. And it was really fun for, for me to see those, those ideas, those changes really work for him.